right, it's the day 43. Uh, we got off to a little bit of a later start today because um, Buzz's iPhone would not uh, would not accept the charge. It looks like the connector on it is bad, so we had to head down to Walmart and buy a wireless charger so that it, at least when he gets back at the end of the day, he can charge it using the wireless charger. Otherwise, we'd be looking for a new phone, and that would be a problematic day. So, uh, anyways crisis was averted and we're back to uh, the Ensign Kawal parking area that we stopped at last night and we're heading back to the Appalachian Trail. It's a little bit of a walk. You see we're on a blue blaze. We're not actually on the trail yet. Uh, started raining most of the night. Um, hopefully it'll stay mostly clear but there is some prediction of potential rain. Uh, spotty rain throughout the day we have our rain gear with us so we'll see how that goes so today is going to be an interesting day in terms of making decisions so uh, yeah it's going to be a interesting day our original goal or plan on, on my spreadsheet was uh, over 17 miles and over 3,000 feet and it to be uh, honest I've been struggling for unknown reasons for the last three days with just doing 10 to 12 miles. Don't know why I felt a lot stronger before. I make sure I get enough water, enough nutrition, but uh, last few days have been a struggle. So question is, is can we do the full 17 miles? We have a few options if we don't uh, that we can hop out at and get picked up by the van. So we're just gonna play it by ear and see how we do. But uh, that's the goal for today. It was a pretty big mile day for us. And uh, yeah, weather right now is good though. So what we're doing is we're backtracking where we got off to be, I know some people would find that silly, but to be purist, we didn't, we're not missing one foot of the trail. So we walked back up to where we got off uphill and now, we're back on the trail again. So just redoing our steps. The other uh, change we made for today was uh, been struggling with the, the bottom of my feet just getting beat up from the rocks and um, really starting to hurt a lot. By the end of the day, you're just wincing with every step. And uh, that's not horrible, but it just kind of sucks. So been thinking like uh, maybe I should dump my ultras and buy some Hoka speed goats which have a thicker sole um, anyways we're at Walmart so we picked up some insoles picked up two different kinds because I wasn't sure they weren't very expensive anyways and uh, so I'm tr trying to use these gel filled insoles in my shoes and uh, you know I think there's a real possibility that they're gonna cause other problems but We'll see how I do with the insoles in my shoes today. All right, walking along and all of a sudden in the forest. And uh, it's always weird when you come upon a field. It's probably not weird overall, just weird for us because we haven't seen many fields coming up from the south. Negative is your shoes get wet from the grass because they're covered in dew or rain from last night. It's kind of cool to see a blaze sticking up just above the grass. As a general statement, though, pretty much all of Maryland has been real easy. Trails are well maintained. The infrastructure that they put in here for hikers is awesome. Hats off to the people that maintain and support this. Um, but the trail terrain, and other than the rocks, hate the rocks, but other than the rocks, um, you know, elevations, we're so used to Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee, where it's just, you know, major ups and downs. We don't have that here. It's been like this big, long field. So we do use a number of apps on the trail. And one of the apps that we're using is an app called Life360. And what that does is it gives us, uh, the members that are in a group on Life360, we can pinpoint where they are via GPS. So... It's very helpful in case someone gets lost 
or you don't know where they are on the trail. It's also very helpful for determining, you know, is Vanish at the point picking us up at the trail, you know, or for her to see where we are on the trail and how far away we are from coming down off the mountain. I'll take this opportunity to talk about a couple other apps I use um, and have been using on the trail. Uh, a good friend of mine told me about this one called Merlin, and it's by the Cornell Ornithology. Uh, I think it had to do with the Cornell University, but um, brilliant app for uh, you just hit the button to record any bird and or multitudes of birds, and it'll in instantly identify them. I mean, within half a second, it just goes boom, boom, boom. So you can pick out four or five birds all at once, and then it'll highlight which ones as it goes, so you know which bird is making which noise. It's kind of cool, and a little bit of, it gives you a little bit of wiki information on each bird also. So, yeah, really happy with that, Merlin. And I know they have a, a version for iOS and a version for Android. The other one I'm using is called Seek, and you can actually just take a picture of a plant or a flower, and it'll tell you what it is, which is pretty cool. Or you can just list all the native plants around you. So, uh, like I did that with a, uh, I saw that red spiky round berry, and I went, what is that? And Seek said, oh, that's a uh, mock strawberry, which has some other names. And uh, it's edible, but not as tasty as you'd expect. And so I tried one, and yeah, they're right. But yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to just identify stuff like that. And of course, the main app I'm using for navigating is Far Out, which I, I'm not a recommend. I'm not recommending that for other uses, but for the Appalachian Trail, it is great. I do have some wishes it would do that it doesn't do. I don't know what plant is doing this, but it's, the whole ground is you see is covered with these little green spiky leaves. All right, so we're heading on. We've left the fields. This is usually done when the ground is really boggy or muddy and you know you don't want to sink into it. In this case I don't think it is but apparently when it's water when it's more wet that would be the case and you could walk on the boards and get a little board walk. Um, it's always amusing though when you walk on the boards and then you hit a missing board. Uh, all right so we'll walk on it now. Some board walks are better than others. This one Pretty nice. Whoa. There's a lot of these. Like I said, so far, a very easy trail. Might be my, my concerns about doing 17, 18 miles and quite a bit of elevation today is my um, concerns are misplaced. Maybe it's real easy. We do hear a road. I guess we're hitting a road crossing. And these smell awesome, whatever they are. Yeah, so we're approaching uh, Raven Rock Road, which is a crossing point. I don't know if there's parking here or not, but uh, when they mentioned the in the sign before about the second stream, this is the second stream. But looks very passable. So cool. Just gotta make sure I don't slip on any of these rocks. Easy peasy. There he is. Time to play Frogger. 
run. <laughs> We've been climbing after, after the road crossing. It's been pretty steep, continues to be pretty steep, mainly stairways, rock stairways. We just keep going up and up. All right, small blue blaze off that main trail right here. Takes you to Raven Rocks, which is here. So, yeah. Mixed reviews on whether there's a view depending on the trees, we'll see. But we're climbing up. Try not to die. I don't know about views, but it's cool. Oh yeah, there's the view, we're back across, hang on, woohoo, alright. <laughs> to make it queasy. Yeah. Uh, oh no. Alright, this place is notorious for its graffiti. I was just telling Buzz, it reminds me of uh, you go to Cadillac Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, and everybody has graffiti and add to it. I think this has got the same kind of thing going on. But wow. And we're back to this kind of stuff. This is the trail. Just gotta work your way. See the, the blaze on the rock over there? So now work your way. And then just piles of rocks and boulders. Bollocks. You gotta find the trail. It's somewhere up there. Just through these rocks. Alright, we're approaching uh Penmar Park, and I'm not sure if this is the end of our day, but we're going to keep going. We're going to discuss that. Anyways, there's a, you can actually see the van back there. Really nice looking picnic area, and grass area park, and, and it looks like another pavilion. So the, we're, we're still on the trail, this is actually the Appalachian Trail, and as you can see by the blaze on the tree, and uh, just goes right through the park. Oh, check this out. It's a view area. All right, we're continuing day 42, and right now we're leaving Penmar Park and heading towards the uh, border of Maryland and Pennsylvania. Ah, what do we have here? The Mason-Dixon Line, Maryland and Pennsylvania, as well as the logbooks.
All right, we're crossing the Mason-Dixon line. We have made Maryland in the books. Maryland's been a great state, really enjoyed it, loved everything about it, and we're looking forward, well, that's a lie. We're worried about Pennsylvania, but we're gonna do it. So, cheers. Cheers. All right, we're hitting our first bridge in Pennsylvania. All right, we're reaching the end of the day. We did decide to keep marching on after Penmar Park, uh, which was I don't know, a little over 10 miles or something like that. And uh, it's another 3.2 miles past Penmar. So it should be almost a 15 mile day, not bad. And then we're gonna call it done. So again, today was a good day. Um, weather's been awesome, trail's been good and uh great views uh, really enjoyed those so yeah it was good uh meeting the van and having a good lunch and then uh and a beer and getting back on trail so uh the idea right now is to get back to the van head to a hotel and uh, fire up the laptop so i can get some work done probably eight hours of actual consulting work so Right now we're looking at taking a zero tomorrow, um, mainly so I can get work done. And uh, you know, thanks to Buzz and Vanish for being understanding in that regard, because obviously it's another day for them that they're not hiking. But on the other hand, you know, I think it could do us all good to let our bodies have a day of rest. All right, so finally finishing up our hike. Should be approaching the van. You can hear all the traffic again. And uh, yeah, it's loud. <laughs> but uh, yeah. That's a beautiful little stream. This is the uh, Menser Gap Road, near Rattlesnake Run Road. 